Welcome back guys to Nuno Solutions. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can use .NET Reflection to get a property value by name using a string. In order to uh, do this properly, I already created an employee class. This employee class contains four properties, employee ID, first name, last name, and email. We're going to instantiate this employee class as an object. So I have some code that I'm going to copy and paste into here that I already have written. It's an employee object with the first name Nuno, last name Pereira, a fake email, and an employee ID of one. So what we're going to do is we're going to console.write line. And I'm going to use string interpolation here. And the property that I'm interested in getting is the first name. So let's say first name, colon, and we're going to use interpolation here. And uh, this is to get the property value by using a string. The way you would do it, let's just do it up here first var we're just gonna say first name create a variable and we're gonna say employee of course you could of course you could just do it like this but that doesn't help us because what if you want to create a method where you pass in the string fetch whatever property you want there's situations where you want to dynamically fetch a property value using the name of the, of the actual property instead of actually doing it in a type fashion so what you do is you, you call the get type method and then in this method you're gonna say dot get property and then in here, you're going to actually specify, you see IntelliSense is asking you for the string name. This is actually the property name. In here, I'm just going to type in first name. And then this just returns you the property info. Now, in order to get the value, you have to get call a get value method. And in here, you, it expects a parameter of a type of object. The object is you could just pass in the employee. This is the object from which the first name property is going to be pulled. So now we could actually use this first name and interpolate that in the string in the console.write line. Let's just run this and see if this works. And you can see here, we, it was able to successfully retrieve the first name using reflection. So one of the cool things that you can do here is that you, this is a lot to type. And if you wanted to create your own, instead of doing get type, dot get property, dot get value, it's just a lot of, a lot of dot, dot, dots. You could actually create an extension method to make this more easily accessible. To do this, right click your solution, click add, new class. And I'm going to name this class extension methods. And I'm actually going to get rid of the namespace because we're using a console app and we just want this to be in the global namespace. And I'm going to change this modifier to public. And I'm going to make this class static because we never want to instantiate this class. So now what we're going to do is we're going to basically add an extension method to the type object. That because since everything inherits from the .NET object class, that means that if we extend object that every single object, no matter what type, even the employee object will automatically inherit this property. I mean, or method, right? So to do this, we're going to start off setting this as public. We're going to create a static method. The return type that we're going to return is object. We're going to call this get prop value, right? This is going to be the name of the method that's going to be the extension method. And this is going to, uh, since this is going to extension method, we're going to use this and we're going to extend the object. This is the type that we're extending. This is the source. And now we're going to pass in a string that is a property name. We're going to do a return statement. It's going to be really simple here. So we're just going to pull the source. The source is going to, in our case, will be the employee object, an instantiated actual object, not the class. We're going to say get type, dot get property. And in here, we're going to pass in the, our variable parameter name, actually the property name, paste it in there. And now we got to get the value. And again, it's just like we did before, we're going to pass in here the object, the source object. And we're going to put a semicolon in here. And it's getting these squiggly lines because these could, these could be null. So I'm just going to actually add a question mark here next to each of the periods. That way, because it, if it is null, what will happen is, if, for example, if you pass in a property that doesn't exist, you'll actually get a null reference exception. If you use the, the question mark prior to this, it, it'll just return null, right? And null is valid because since we're returning an object. So let me save this. Go back into our program class. Now, instead of doing this big, gigantic line, let me just comment that out. What we could do actually is just grab the employee and in the interpolation, we could just say get prop value. You see how now IntelliSense is actually finding our extension method. And we can just pass in the property name here, which would be first name. Now this is case sensitive guys. So if you type this incorrectly, you're not going to retrieve the value. You can see here now when I run it, it's able to find the first name of a value of Nuno, which is what we set for our employee object. So let me show you here. So if you put a, a name that's not valid, actually, we're just going to like not use the correct case like that and run it. It's not going to be able to find it. You see, it's really returning null, and, but since it's interpolating, it's just interpolating into blank. It's almost like there's no value, right? So you got to make sure that you spell this correctly and you use the correct case. That makes a difference in here.
Now, one of the things with reflection that's pretty common as well is the need to be able to get property names, like get a list of property names. For example, let's say you wanted to, um, you had an object and you wanted to create some kind of search filter and you wanted to populate a drop down with all the possible property names of an object. How would you do that? Well, in reflection, you can actually cycle through the properties in, in an object and retrieve their names. To do that, you would have to do a for each loop like this. Right, we'll say, save our, we're going to get the property and we're going to get it from the employee object and we're going to call it get type, right? That gives us the, start the reflection information and then we're going to say get properties. And now we're looping through all the properties in the employee object and I'm going to say console.write line and look, it, it tells us like really no, already knows exactly what I want to do. We're going to console.write line the property name, but I am going to use interpolation here, string interpolation. And I'm going to actually put a property name label here. Just I'm actually going to comment out the console dot right line at the top. I'm going to run this, and you'll see now that it's outputting all the property names in our employee class. If I go into the employee class here, it's returning an ID, first name, last name, and email. And you can see that's exactly what the definition of our employee class is. So guys, that's a quick video for you on how you can use reflection. There's a lot of use cases for this, especially uh, in the professional world. So I hope this helps you out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.